This video is sponsored by Onshape. With recent advancements in artificial intelligence tools for design, we are about to see the biggest creative and cultural explosion since the invention of electricity in the 1890s. This progress is happening fast too. This is an example of an AI interpretation of a shoe from just nine months ago. Not the best. And here's a new AI model that just launched more recently called DALI 2. So just so you have some perspective on the impact of artificial intelligence as a creative tool, these are 400 shoe concepts that I created in about two hours. All I did was type in some text and the AI created an image based on those text prompts. The first time I used these tools, I was so overwhelmed that I couldn't even sleep. It's like the light bulb has just been invented and turned on for the first time. But even that doesn't really do it justice. This technology is like a distortion portal that reinterprets all recorded human experience and shows you a new world. By the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of how artificial intelligence will impact design, engineering, and culture as a whole. The implications of AI technology are both scary and exciting. Whether it's deep fakes, propaganda imagery, or losing our jobs to automated AI systems, they took our job. Like the guardian. Education is the first step to knowing how to navigate these kinds of issues, so stay tuned in. Big shout out to these people for helping with this video, especially Kadar, Rafi, and all of the expert AI teams that I interviewed. Your insights were so helpful. I've dedicated my entire professional life to honing my craft as a designer, and this AI created more high fidelity ideas in just a few seconds than I could create in several days or even weeks. I've never been more impressed by a piece of technology before. What's even crazier is that just two months Months after this was launched, Dolly 2, an even more high fidelity AI model was launched by Google's research team called Google Imogen. The rate at which this space is evolving is just insane. I'm predicting that there will be more art and design concepts made in the next couple of years than in the last century. Now, to be fair, a lot of these designs are not finished concepts. I'd still wanna do a lot of work on these in order to account for things like comfort, fit, material choices, and everything else. A lot of these designs probably couldn't even be manufactured. But you have to remember, if I wanted to get anything even close to this level of quality just one year ago, it would have taken at least 100 times longer probably more. The mark of any good designer is to see the potential in something before it's fully developed. A good designer has the vision to see the next revolutionary idea from a napkin sketch. And right now, AI design tools are in the napkin sketch phase. But the fact that it's this good, this early in its infancy, tells me that it's just gonna be a revolutionary concept. Before I get any deeper into this video, I want to talk about why I chose to design shoes with AI. I chose shoes because they're pretty much the most widespread fashion statement in the world. Almost all cultures wear some kind of shoe. Comfort, fit, and performance is also really important for a shoe, so it's a nice blend of form and function. Because of all that, shoes are a really good testing ground for trying out new design tools. Also, an AI is only as good as its data set. There are millions of images of shoes in most AI databases, and shoes have a defined form factor which makes it easy for the AI to understand how to make a convincing image of one. So anyway, these are some of my friends' folders of their AI designs. People are pumping out thousands of images and sharing them all over social media and Discord. And as we share our ideas and tips and tricks, the rate at which we all innovate together is just exponential. We saw rapid improvement in design skills with social media, but I feel like AI is going to make things move even faster. So here's what's happening. When I enter these text prompts into the software, the AI isn't just taking existing images and stitching them together. It actually has an idea of what each of these words represent. A lot of ideas aren't necessarily original. They're just steps on other things we've seen and kind of been inspired by. So you could almost argue that the AI is kind of in that same boat where it's like, it's not literally copying things it's seen. It's just kind of inferring what it can on what it's learned and what it's seen, just like we do. That's what the AI is doing. Because of that, the AI can basically blend multiple concepts together. If you wanna blend a shoe design with neo-futurist architecture and H.R. Giger's aliens, it can do that. If you wanna do some weird cuttlefish stained glass running shoe hybrid, it can do it. There are several tools like this, but the most cutting edge ones at the time are Dolly 2, Mid Journey, and Disco Diffusion. There are other newer tools like Google Imagen, and there will certainly be others in the future that are even better. So let's talk about what this means for design. First of all, you have to remember that AI interprets things very differently than humans do. These artificial intelligence models have the capacity to see the totality of the entire recorded human experience. It can emulate every famous designer, every art style, and every scene in all of recorded history. Dolly 2 was trained on hundreds of 
of millions of images. And it's likely that these AI models will be trained on billions of images over the next few months or years. It has a larger catalog of all cultural, historical, and artistic movements than any human will ever possess in their mind. To learn the fundamentals of new product architecture or design styles is really difficult for a human artist. But as long as you have enough images to train an artificial intelligence, it can accurately depict any style. The landscape of how art is produced commercially with projects that require a deadline and tell you, you have to draw me like a 13th century cuirass in the style of, I don't know, Breath of the Wild in like 24 hours, right? That's pretty hard to meet on a deadline. And I think as myself, as a professional artist, when I see something like that, I would really embrace the ability to get an AI tool to do that. Because AI design is so fast, I feel like I'm willing to explore more risky ideas because I don't have to spend hours on a concept that might not end up being worth pursuing. This is amazing, but there are other ways that artificial intelligence is very limited. AI doesn't have the same context as humans do, whether that's an understanding of physical space or cultural norms or historical contexts. So for example, if you tell a person to go inside of a house, they walk to a door, they turn the doorknob and they walk inside. If you told an artificial intelligence to go inside the house, you would have to train it to understand what a house is, what a door is, and what turning the doorknob means specifically. It doesn't have an understanding of the mechanics of how a doorknob works. It wouldn't even know what inside the house means. These things that humans think of as simple ideas are actually very multi-layered. It's just that we've had an entire lifetime of training to understand these concepts. Even if you trained an AI to go inside the house, so to speak, the AI would probably do it in a very unexpected way. A lot of our cultural contexts and ethical systems exist for good reasons, and AI just doesn't really understand them. That's a big limiting factor because you can't design for human motivations and needs if you don't even know what they are. On that note, one of my human motivations is to see the subscriber count next to my name get bigger. It actually does help me out a lot, so if you enjoy the content so far, click the red subscribe button below. Anyway, back to the video. If I'm designing shoes with Dolly 2, the AI doesn't understand what a shoe is in the way that we do. It only understands a shoe as a flat 2D image. The AI doesn't understand that a shoe protects our feet. It has no concept of physical space or materiality. With the right model and enough data, you can train an AI to learn a lot of these things. And with how fast things are progressing, I think it's closer than you might think. But people underestimate how complex a reality really is. This lack of understanding on the part of AI can be catastrophic for humanity. I think this risk should be taken seriously, but it's so over covered and overblown in pop culture with every sci-fi movie ever that I'd rather not focus too much on it. Instead, I'd rather focus on how AI can move humanity forward. One of the most famous examples of this is Move 37, done by a program called AlphaGo. Now pay attention to this. I know it might not seem like it's directly related to design, but I promise you it's really, really important. AlphaGo is an AI that learned to play a 3,000 year old board game called Go. Go is considered to be one of the most complex board games known to man. There are more potential moves in Go than there are atoms in the universe, and it was thought that an AI could never learn to play it because it required so much creativity and human intuition. AlphaGo was trained first by playing Go against amateur humans, and then by playing against itself hundreds of thousands of times over a period of a few months. The team who made AlphaGo challenged 18-time World Go champion Lee Sedol to a five-game match. In game two of AlphaGo versus Lee Sedol, the machine made a move no human would ever think of doing. Ajap sees AlphaGo plays the move 37, and Ajap puts a stone in the board. Wow, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, value. Uh. Ooh. That's a very that's Ooh. a very surprising move. <laughs> I thought I thought it was I thought it was a mistake. Move 37 was unthinkable in the 3,000 year human history of the game. AlphaGo wasn't just copying typical human moves anymore. It was making its own style of play. In the end, the AlphaGo AI beat the best human Go player alive with that unorthodox move. And then, in game four against AlphaGo, Lee Sedol did a similarly unlikely move, famously known as move 78. These moves didn't just change the game of Go. They indicate how AI will push our understanding forward in various creative fields, whether it's art, 
design, or engineering. What's significant about this story is that AI pushed humanity forward by making a creative and innovative move that was completely outside of any sort of tradition or convention around how the game should be played. AI is not creative in the way that humans are, but that's a good thing. Artificial intelligence is really just a bunch of dizzyingly complex mathematical equations that learn over time to achieve a specific goal. Our task is no longer to create functions we understand, but rather to create functions whose answers we can verify to be useful. We can make these functions, which are the correct answer, even if we don't understand how it got the correct answer. And this is what AI is starting to do. But those equations do lead to some incredibly novel solutions that reveal humanity's blind spots and help us innovate. That's why Move 37 and Move 78 are so important. There are other implications of AI as well. So with so much creative output, it's only natural that trends will cycle very quickly. Things like graphic design trends and digital design trends will move the fastest. Other things that exist in the physical world like product design and fashion will be a lot slower because they're limited by global supply chains and production cycles. However, there will probably be an incentive to make those supply chains more efficient in order to accommodate the rapid flow of ideas coming from AI design. If you're looking for inspiration or new ideas early on in your project, you can just combine a few art movements or designers that you're looking to draw inspiration from and see how it turns out. These tools are basically like a better version of Pinterest where you get the exact inspiration that you're looking for. On that note, because you can type in pretty much anything you want, it's likely that stock image websites will really struggle when this tech becomes more mainstream. This is pretty ironic considering that most of these AI models were probably trained by scraping images from those exact stock photo websites. But there are even new AI technologies that can turn 2D images into 3D models, which can then be 3D printed or maybe even manufactured in the future. This tool is called Pif... Pifa... Pifood? Pifu, Pifu HD. Whoever named this is clearly an AI researcher and not a marketing guy, but that's all right. He's probably way smarter than all of us. But anyway, it can take a 2D image of a person and use AI to turn it into a 3D model. There are also other AI models that can go directly from a text prompt to a 3D model. If you want complete control over the final result of what you're drawing, but just need to speed up the tedious processes like shading and rendering your concepts, you can use a tool called VizCom. So rather than spending an hour adding color and shading to a sketch, you can just do it in a fraction of the time. They're even working on a 2D to 3D converter where the same 2D concepts can be transferred to a 3D model. What our tools are mainly focused around are figuring out how we can kind of advance and accelerate the ideation process that happens early on in this design space. When it comes to visualizing drawings, figuring out how to kind of bridge the gap between 2D and 3D, shortening the distance between having an idea and actually bringing it to life is kind of where our technology actually exists. It's absolutely insane. My friend James has even been messing with making AI-generated textures and even extremely uncomfortable AI-generated audio. Even this audio is generated. Thanks for putting me in the video, John. Things are really weird right now and they're only going to get weirder. I really appreciate it and I will never forget it. Okay, that is enough AI-generated speech for today. <laughs> So anyway, these tools have a very long way to go until they create a perfectly finished output, but the fact that we've made so much progress in such a short time makes me believe that they're not as far off as you think. I think it's a little bit unreasonable to criticize an AI model that's just clearly insanely beautiful though. I mean, good luck finding a human who can come up with six images based on a vague text prompt in just a few seconds. I see a lot of people focusing on a few isolated examples of what AI can't do. But to me, focusing on what the AI can't do is like getting keys to the most advanced spaceship in the world and complaining that it doesn't have enough cup holders. I mean, yeah, we should strive to improve our tools, but don't lose sight of the amazing innovations that are happening right now. So the next big question a lot of people have is whether AI is just sort of recycling existing ideas and not creating anything original. I know I've covered this earlier in the video, but I think it deserves more attention. With clip-guided diffusion AI models like Dolly 2, it's not just stitching a bunch of existing ideas together. Let's say I'm designing a shoe that's inspired by Art Nouveau and flowing vines and branches like this one. The AI actually knows what those concepts are. So it creates a new version of each of those things. And perhaps most impressively, it knows how to combine those concepts in an interesting way. One potential issue is that people will naturally gravitate towards things where there's 
there's a large data set of images because the AI will be able to produce better results from that. I'm already seeing this happening right now. If you type in inspired by Zaha Hadid or inspired by HR Giger into Dolly 2, it produces some really, really cool images. Once a group of us learned about those prompts, some people have sort of stuck to those keywords, maybe a little bit longer than they should have. And there is a risk that a lot of people will generate images from the same text prompts over and over again because they produce good results. In the internet and social media age, it sometimes feels like design has entered this era of creative entropy. Because everything is so well documented on the internet, it's easy to reference any style, any art movement, or really any image over the last several millennia. Pinterest algorithms and design blogs are constantly showing us inspiration that's the least controversial to a wide audience rather than the best or most interesting designs. I feel like AI could make this even worse where we all just use the same prompts and borrow inspiration from the exact same set of images. I could see a world where we all just recycle old trends over and over again. It's already happening now, but AI might make it even worse. For this reason, I think the designers who are serious about AI will actually have their own set of inspirational images that they feed to the artificial intelligence to create their own unique designs. While I do fear that everything will look the same, if you really analyze any art or design style, our personal contributions are usually kind of limited. A lot of decisions have already been made for us and we're just making small tweaks. For example, if you're painting a realistic anatomical study, you're incorporating hundreds of years of figure drawing techniques that were perfected by other people. Artists no longer have a little thing to like mix paint together. Do, do any of you know how to mix paint? Maybe some. Do you know how to like mix paint? Like how to mix like a, a red and like purple paint? Do you do that in your daily life or do you just use Photoshop? Select the color. A lot of the work has been done by the designers before you regarding ergonomics, style, and fit. So what is your personal contribution to this? I don't know the exact answer, but it's probably not as much as people give themselves credit for. So really the question becomes, what is the value of craftsmanship in design? Most creativity is just copying, transforming, and combining elements to make something new. I don't think that AI tools are really unique in this. All of us are working with pretty much the same tools and materials. We're just repackaging them in new ways. When you look at the data and aggregate, you realize like how tightly knit people think, right? Like we're, we're, we're social creatures after all. And it's only like you take a very normal concept and you just add a tiny little bit. And it's completely out there. And I think that's really fascinating about human creativity because that little bit is not something you can get from data. It's like from your real life, right? Like the, the cake my grandma baked when I was two or something like that. You put that in a picture and suddenly, wow, nobody, because nobody had your same grandma that baked that cake that when we were in two, right? They'll just draw a generic strawberry cake. AI art and design is more removed from craftsmanship than ever before. You don't have to draw well or be able to work with your hands, but I don't think that automatically makes it a bad thing. It could be bad if you don't have an understanding of foundational principles. I mean, that's why design schools still teach things like figure drawing and art history. They're important even if they don't directly apply to your everyday work. In the case of AI and design, our work absolutely could become very derivative and boring, but only if we allow it to. It's going to take ingenuity on the part of designers, artists, and engineers to stop this from happening. You as an individual have more power than ever to change this. We all have access to the most powerful tools in the world at our fingertips. While technology has been a centralizing force in the design, art, and engineering fields, there's no reason why you can't break away to create something new. As a result of the internet, we all have more access to weird subcultures and ideas than ever before. So while the mainstream internet might be kind of boring and homogenized, you can find a subreddit or discord group that talks about whatever weird thing you're into. The internet is the great equalizer where you can find your tribe and find a place to share unique ideas. Before we move further, I want to talk about today's sponsor, Onshape. Onshape is an exceptionally well-designed, cloud-native 3D CAD software. Before I took Onshape on as a sponsor, I talked to about a dozen of my friends who use Onshape regularly, and they had nothing but good things to say about it. The interface is far more intuitive than competitors, and it's not bloated with a bunch of unnecessary features or administrative setup and maintenance. In fact, Onshape was created by the same founders of SolidWorks because they recognize product designers still face many challenges related to their CAD system. And the best way to address these problems was to just start from scratch. If you've ever collaborated in multidisciplinary teams, you know how easy it is for your ideas to get lost in translation. With Onshape, it's not only a powerful CAD tool, 
but it's also a project management tool that keeps everything organized so your business can run more smoothly. I know this video talks a lot about AI and automation, but one thing that AI can never replace is human collaboration. Onshape isn't just a CAD tool, it's a collaborative platform that allows you to talk with your team effectively and get things done faster so you can design better products. Go check out the link in the description to learn more about Onshape. It's a great tool and I highly recommend it. Back to the video. Even though AI is largely separate from a lot of the craft involved with art and design, there's still a learning curve involved with talking to the AI the right way. This is a nascent field known as prompt engineering. Jordan Taylor of VizCom predicted this in the last AI video I made on this channel, so props to Jordan for being right about this. I think someone like a poet might be the best artist of the future because he's able to talk to the AI in the best way possible to generate things. Basically, the way you put text into the AI really changes the kind of output you get. Just as an aside, prompt engineering might be the worst possible name for this new field. Prompt engineering makes it feel like it's really technical and cold. It would be like calling a cheeseburger a bovine shoulder that's ground up, combined with coagulated and salted milk, and heated up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, yeah, it's factually accurate to describe a cheeseburger that way, but it's unimaginative and boring. And if you cook a burger at 160, it's gonna be really dry and bland, but that's neither here nor there. I would prefer to just call the job, you know, creative visual writer or AI text visualist, or at least just call it what it is, an AI text to image designer. You're not engineering anything when you write a prompt to the AI. But anyway, let's just get back to AI. If you type a specific kind of camera lens, such as Sigma 85 millimeter, and then include the shutter speed and aperture, the AI will actually mimic those lens settings. So having an understanding of photography fundamentals, if you're looking to create photographic AI images, is really important. There are a lot of other tricks that you can do to get a good image, and a big part of future creative pursuits will be about finding ways to get the best out of these AI systems using poetic words or song lyrics or whatever else. Artists and designers tend to create far better images with AI than non-artists because they know the language and the historical contexts of their craft. Here's another example by Mersmensch. Mersmensch, I'm really sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. He basically started by trying to show a photo of a cat riding a bike, and that didn't exactly yield the results he was looking for, because there are no photographs of cats riding bikes. So then he added, in the style of Mike Soa. Mike Soa is known for putting animals in human contexts in his artwork. This immediately yields far better results, but it's all illustrations. So the last step was to add, but as photography at the end, so that the AI knew to basically depict it as a photograph. Through all that, you basically have a photograph of a cat riding a bicycle that's way more convincing than the original image. Having a big mental library of various concepts and ideas has always been important to artists and designers, but we're going to need to be able to identify our inspiration with words. They'll basically be sort of like this hybrid between a poet and a visual artist. You can also art direct the AI to do all sorts of weird things. So for example, with Disco Diffusion, you can upload an image that you want to start with, and then it will gradually morph that initial design based on a text prompt that you write. I made some changes to the initial image in Photoshop so that it created this pillar that would go across the shoe. I also wanted to get some stained glass effects in there with his text prompt, but it wasn't showing up for some reason. So then I added in some little orange and red blotches, and that's when it really came alive. You can do similar things with Dolly too. You can upload an image or a design that you've made, and it will give you several variations of that design. Another thing that people are messing around with is erasing different parts of the image and then typing in a different prompt. This is a really good way to come up with crazy collages or stitch different styles together in the same image. Each AI model kind of has its own little idiosyncrasies. Dolly 2 seems to yield the most high definition photographic images. Disco Diffusion gives you a lot of parameters and controls and you can also enter in multiple prompts with different weights or emphasis. And then Mid Journey is sort of like a middle ground between Dolly 2 and Disco Diffusion, at least in my opinion. Everyone has their own preferences around which one is their favorite. You can type in the exact same prompt in all of these softwares and get completely different results. Each each of these models prefer different text prompts as well. Just as an example, Midjourney seems to do best with either shorter text prompts or more artistic and poetic prose. Dolly 2 seems to do better with specific prompts, and all of these AI models sort of have their place. It just depends on what kind of style you're going for. I personally would love a combination of Disco Diffusion's parameters and controls with Dolly 2's high fidelity, but that's just me. Whether you like it or not, 
AI is coming. We're seeing exponential growth in this field already, and there aren't any signs of slowing down. Right now, Dolly 2 is closed access, but you can sign up for the wait list. Disco Diffusion is accessible to everyone, and Mid Journey has a wait list, but it's a little bit easier to get it than Dolly 2. But don't worry, be patient. There's already an open source version of Dolly 2 that was reverse engineered by Lucid Reigns and posted on GitHub, which is basically like this open source software website. It's not ready for public release yet because they need to train the model with data, but once that happens, a high quality version of Dolly 2 will be accessible to everyone. People are also using a lower quality version of Dolly 2 called Dolly Mini. They're not associated with each other in any way, but the stuff that people are making with it are absolutely hilarious and it's okay because the images are obviously fake, but this could be really, really dangerous if it actually spit out high fidelity versions of these images in seconds. Like just think about all of the propaganda you could make or all sorts of crazy stuff. But for better or for worse, the genie's out of the bottle and there's really just no turning back at this point. Okay, so if you only need two people to do the same job instead of 50 or 100 people, that means we're all gonna lose our jobs, right? They took your job! They took your job! Normally in a production of this size, you would employ about 50 to 100 freelancers. It's not because you actually need 50 to 100 freelancers full time, but to fit the production timeline, they all draw a picture each so that we can deliver the product in like a month instead of a year or however long it would take one artist to draw. So with an AI, we can have the benefits of like having the pictures instantaneously show up. with. Video game design, of course, most of the assets are, you know, NPCs and like world building things, right? You have like a few characters that you're attached to and everything else. The idea is to build the surface and landscape of the environment. And all of that is, you know, tedious work, <laughs> uh, even for artists. What we've done is basically make the AI scope out the environment of like do the world building. And then we, the human artists, do the protagonists, the heroes, you know, the exciting stuff, the villains, right? The villains that are so bad that we hate and then the heroes that are so good that we love. Essentially made the artist do, uh, the AI do the backdrop, the world building, and then we humans give it life. I think it's more likely that people's jobs will change and teams will get smaller. So I think that is very plausible, like where these tools will enable these kind of super designers to do multiple, like these multifaceted problems, but with a relatively small input. Like there's, 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 there's a lot less technical hurdles they'll have to jump to get that level of fidelity that normally a studio of people would need you would need to produce that but i can totally imagine either these design teams getting smaller or a world where the, the talent is reallocated like prompt engineers professional curators like you have a design this, the studio just looks different maybe there's all the same amount of people but what they're doing is just different. What it comes down to is accessibility of the tools. Just like photography has become increasingly more accessible and now pretty much everybody has a camera in their pocket, everyone will be able to make their own logo or illustration with artificial intelligence. Since you don't have to learn those technical tools, you have more time to focus on the idea, the core idea. We like to say like, we're just literally assisting you and like accelerating your workflow. It's going to be less about your technical skill set and more about the quality of your ideas. We're gonna probably see an actually, uh, paradoxically, an explosion in creative expression because what's gonna happen is people are gonna be able to like pitch to like movie studios ideas from a very small team where the quality of the idea is actually what's gonna end up mattering. Um, not the technical abilities of the person to create it. Realistically, you can answer your fears about AI by comparing it to pretty much any other advancement that's happened throughout history. Photography didn't replace painting, but it definitely narrowed the scope that it operated in. And then stock photography and point and shoot cameras greatly reduced the need to hire a pro photographer. And Dolly 2 will probably largely wipe out the need for stock photography in a few years. We still hire photographers to do things, but it's usually only for certain situations. I think that AI will facilitate all kinds of innovation in adjacent fields. I'm an optimist. It'll be like when people got photographs. Photography as an element, it didn't displace artists. It just made art so much better. Like you look at paintings before photographs and you're like, what are they even doing, right? And you look at paintings after photographs and they're beautiful, they're brilliant. People learn so much faster. I myself grew so much as an artist after being shown more and more pictures and the pictures on the internet of quality that is being produced by 13 year olds and like 14 year olds is like so much better than they were like 
50 years ago, right? So many more people are becoming artists right now. It's crazy. It's absolutely insane. And I think AI will have another explosion of that. Things like cubism, impressionism, fauvism, and pretty much all of modern art definitely would not have happened in the same way without the advent of photography. The bottom line is that if you're an adaptable creative person and you look for opportunities, you're gonna be fine. In terms of the legal implications of this tech, large corporations will probably try to make it illegal for others to use their intellectual property in artificial intelligence models. Whether that's ethical or not, I can't imagine Disney being happy about their images being used in someone else's database. According to current copyright law, only the person who actually made the AI script can copyright the work. I have a feeling this will probably change as the law catches up with our understanding of AI though, because that just doesn't sit well with me. I was talking to my friend Rafi about this and he's been a designer for 40 years or something, and he brought up an interesting point around who owns the words and the prompts. Let's say I use H.R. Giger's name in one of my prompts. Should Giger have some measure of profit from the use of his body of work? Should I credit H.R. Giger? Does H.R. Giger have a say in how his content is used in the AI database? I mean, speaking for myself personally, if someone used my work and put it in an AI, I wouldn't really care about it. The only time I'd care is if they blatantly ripped off my work and copied it exactly without crediting me. But besides that, this is really kind of a gray area. The most similar example I can find is in music sampling. It could also end up becoming one of those things that's just impossible to enforce. Like, how do you prove that somebody used your images in an AI database? I'm not an IP lawyer, so this is an area where I mostly have questions more than answers. I think that artificial intelligence will allow humanity to enter a creative renaissance. I don't think art as a medium of expressing self would ever, ever, ever be replaced. We've been making it since Neolithic times. My friend Rafi and I were talking about this as well, and he was explaining that AI generates based on our collective experience. It takes millions of photographs and forms a model from them. Humans have a strong sense of personal ownership in their work, and AI really disrupts that idea. If you've actually made it this far in the video and you still think that AI art feels like cheating or it's not real art, it's probably because it takes inspiration from millions of sources, rapidly aggregates the materials, and then spits out an idea. It really messes with our ego-driven world of individual creation. Unlike egocentric human concept generation, AI doesn't care if it gets picked first or, or last or picked at all. It's doing collective gathering because that's what it's been programmed to do. The real magic will always come from that human touch. Once you create that piece of AI generated art or design, what are you gonna do with it? How will you expand on it? Ultimately, AI is here to stay. It's a tool just like any other. Artificial intelligence is certainly not the end of human creativity. In fact, I'd say it's just the beginning. Thanks for watching everyone. If you liked this video, consider subscribing or consider supporting me on Patreon for all sorts of cool behind the scenes content. Whatever you end up doing, I hope you have a great day.